Now, in this session, uh, we're going to determine the Thevenin's uh, theorem, uh, the second example, which contain the dependent source. Now, in the previous example, uh, we have discussed the Thevenin theorem without dependent source. Now, in this case, we have dependent source. See? We have uh, five ampere current source, and then again, we have two Vx dependent source, voltage control voltage source. Now, this Vx is controlled by this branch voltage. Now for this one, we have to apply the Thevenin's theorem here at terminal A and B, the load resistor or the load is already being removed. Now it's like uh, we are one step closer for the solution. The first step is we have to remove the load, right? But in this case, the load is already being removed. Now to determine the uh, Thevenin's equivalent circuit here, it is to find the RTH, but uh, we can also determine the VTH. Since we are practicing uh, the Thevenin's theorem, we can determine the VTH and the RTH. Now to solve this one, uh, let's uh, solve again uh, in the Microsoft Word. Okay, now to find VTH. Okay, to find the VTH, our first step is to remove the, the connected load. Now, load is already being removed, and then we have replaced it with the open circuit voltage or Thevenin's equivalent voltage. Now, in this case, you can apply the mesh analysis and then determine the current or the current in each mesh once you have the current i2 then you can determine this uh, this voltage this voltage will be equal to this voltage remember that when you also assign the current in this loop okay let's say this open circuit voltage is given by voc if you also give the current in this loop you uh, that loop current will be equal to zero because here is open circuit Open circuit means you have infinite resistance and then when there's infinite resistance our current will be equal to zero which means this branch voltage this branch resistance times this loop current two times zero will be equal to zero which means if you're able to determine the voltage in this branch voltage across the six ohm then it's same as we are determining the voltage the open circuit voltage so let's uh, apply the mesh analysis in this case and then determine the uh, Thevenin's equivalent voltage. Okay, now here I have obtained the equation uh, apply, uh, using the mesh analysis. Now in the mesh one, uh, I1 is equal to uh, 5 ampere. The reason behind this is it's a super mesh case one. Uh, case one. This uh, 5 ampere current source is only at one of the mesh. And so your I1 can assign as 5 ampere. The same sign because I1 and 5 ampere are in the same direction to that branch. So I got I1 is equal to 5 ampere. And in mesh 2, we have 4 I2 minus I1. 4 of I2 minus I1 plus 2 of I2 minus I3 plus 6 of uh, I2 minus I4. Okay, I'm assuming this open circuit current as I4, uh, literally this I4 will be equal to zero. Yeah, it's written here. I4 is equal to zero. The reason is open circuit. So our the resistance in this, in this is infinity. Our final equation in mesh two is 12 I2 minus two I3 is equal to 20. Okay, let's make this one as equation one. And then in the mesh three here, we have two Vx, minus two Vx. Okay, looking at this I3, current I3 direction, is entering from negative to plus. So we have minus two Vx plus two of I3 minus I2. I have written here two of I3 minus I2 should be equal to zero. Now where Vx is equal to four of I1 minus I2. Now at this branch is given Vx. This branch voltage is controlling this voltage source. 
So this Vx is equal to 4 of I1 minus I2. Therefore, we have written like this, okay, uh, 4 of I1 minus I2, or, okay, you can also write 4 of minus I2 plus I1, in either way, but the uh, meaning remains same. And then if you substitute there, and then also I'm substituting I1 is equal to 5 ampere, and then we got the second equation, 6 of I2 plus 2 I3 is equal to 40. Let's name this one as equation 2. Now we got two equations. Okay, let's highlight this one. Okay, this also. Now we got two equations and the two unknown uh, mesh current. We can solve this and then our final I2 value is equal to 3.333 ampere. Now why we are interested with I2? Why not with I3? You can also determine I3, but there's no use for determining I3. The reason for determining I2 is so we need this branch voltage. So if you know the branch current, then we can multiply branch current times the branch resistance. So this I2 times 6 will give you the open circuit voltage or our Thevenin's equivalent voltage. Okay, so our VTH we got is 20 volt in this case. Now, you may be wondering, there's a presence of dependent source, we're not doing anything special. In case of finding the VTH, in case of finding the VTH, the steps remain same. We're not doing anything, we're just removing the uh, RL, but in our case, RL is already removed. So we are simply applying the mesh analysis and calculating this open circuit voltage. To find the VTH, the step remains same for both dependent and independent source. Now in case of calculating the RTH, okay, let's calculate RTH for this now. To calculate the RTH, uh, in case of the independent source, we have removed all the independent source and then we just calculate the R internal or R equivalent for that network. But when there's a presence of dependent source, the first step is we have to remove the RL. Okay, RL we have removed. And then second step, I'll write down the steps. Step one, it's better I pause the video, write everything, and then record. Okay, now to calculate the RTH, to calculate the to to find okay, I think it's better we write it right here to find RTH to find the RTH we have to remove the RL. Now this one is same for both uh, dependent and independent source. Again, remove the independent source. This one, this step one and two remain same for both the case. And the special step that we have with the independent source, with the dependent source is, at the place where we remove the RL, where we remove the load resistance, we have to apply either voltage source or the current source. In this case, we have applied the voltage source. V node is equal to one volt. You can give any value for that applied voltage. With respect to that applied voltage, you have to determine this I node. Once you got the I node, you can simply apply the Ohm's law. You can simply apply the Ohm's law to find the, okay, let's see, uh, RL will be equal to V node divided by I node. So this is how we have to determine the, it's not RL, okay, this is RTH is equal to V node divided by I node. Okay, I'm going to explain once again, in order to find the RTH, when there is presence of the dependent source, step one and two remain same for both the case, extra or additional step that we have with the dependent source is in place of the removed RL, in this place we have to either apply the voltage source 
or we have to apply the current source. If you are applying the voltage source, we have to find I node using okay. We have to find I node using any of the circuit analyzing technique. Once you got I node, we already know the V node, so we can determine the RT using this formula. And then if you are applying the current source, if you are applying the current source I node here, we have to determine the V node at that place. Again, once we have V node and I node, you can determine the RTH using this formula. Now let's solve the, okay, here we have applied the V node. Now we can solve I node and determine the RTH in case, in this example. Okay, uh, uh, I have done the uh, solution for this one. Now, okay, these are the steps that we are going to use. And in the mesh one, in the mesh one, we have dependent source. Okay, we have minus two Vx. So oh, depending upon this direction of this current, the mesh current, we have minus two Vx plus two of I1 minus I2 is equal to zero. Now, in order to substitute here, Vx is given by four of minus I2. Now, this Vx is equal to four times negative of I2. Or you can also write Vx is equal to minus 4i2. And then if you simplify this one, we get 2i1 plus 6i2 is equal to zero. Now let's name this one as equation T. And then at mesh two. Now in this mesh, we have again we have to apply the uh, KVL here. 4i2 plus 2 of i2 minus i1 in this mesh plus six of I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. Again, if you simplify this one, you get this expression and then we're naming it as equation uh, four. Okay, uh, let me correct here. Okay, let me check. Minus two I1 plus 12 I2, six I3, yes, okay, is equal to zero. Now we're naming this one as equation uh, four. And then at mesh three, in this mesh, we have six of I3 minus I2 plus two of I3 plus one volt should be equal to zero. So let's check six of I3 minus I2. Okay, in order to make that circuit visible, let's make it smaller in size. Mm -hmm. I still it's not visible. Okay. Okay. The six of I3 minus I2. Here, 6 of I3 minus I2 plus 2 of I3 plus 1 volt. Plus 1 volt should be equal to 0. And then if we simplify this one, we have minus 6 of I2 plus 8 I3 is equal to negative 1. Now, we are naming this one as equation 5. Now, we got three unknown equation for the three mesh here. So, we can solve that simultaneously or any other methods and then determine your IT. Why we are interested in IT? Our aim is to calculate the resistance in this branch, right? So if you know the IT, then you can determine the uh, R here. If you know the IT, you can also determine the I node. So how IT and I node are related? IT is equal to negative of I node. They are in opposite direction. So, we have IT is equal to negative of 0 0.1667 ampere and IT and I node are related with a negative sign. They are in opposite direction. So I node is equal to this many ampere. Now once we have I node, we also have V node. With this relationship, we can determine the RTH is equal to six ohm. Now our final, uh, you know, final, uh, uh, equivalent uh, Thevenin's uh, network uh, will be voltage source, which is equal to 20 volts, connected, okay, uh, it's quite difficult to draw the circuit here. Instead, I will uh, write in the word here. Final equivalent Thevenin's circuit will be V, Th okay, VTH in series with RTH. I hope with this you can imagine uh, imagine how the circuit will look like. 
So uh, we have already discussed in the previous example. Okay, I don't know whether I have that or not. Okay, it will be like this. VTH is 20 volt, then RTH uh, is uh, 6 uh, ohm in our case, in the second example. And then if you have RL, you can connect. But in our example that we have solved in the dependent source, we don't have RL, so we can keep it open. Okay, let me explain once again to find the RTH. First step is we have to remove RL. Second step is to remove the independent source. Third step, you have to apply either voltage or the current source at the RL. Now, one, if you're applying the voltage source, we have to determine the I node. If you have applied the current source, we have to apply the V node. Once you have V node and I node, you can determine the RTH. Now, the value of I node or V node that you're giving is up to you. You can give any value. Depending upon the applied value, you'll have the current I node or the voltage V node. So that's it about the example, the second example, uh, which contain the dependent source. So you can also solve the similar uh, examples which contain the dependent source uh, in the tutorial sheet I'm going to upload. Just check uh, the VLE. That's it. And if you have any doubt, let's discuss.